In 1968 at the height of the Vietnam War, photojournalist Eddie Adams clicked the shutter on his camera at the exact right moment to capture one of the war's most iconic images. It would go on to not only bring him fame, but also turn the tide of public opinion against the war back home in the United States. The image, now known as the Saigon Execution, is one of the few still images we have showing the precise moment of death. Violent and merciless, it epitomizes the conflict's brutality in a single image. Despite the power of this image, it also taught Adams the limits of photography and of a single image to tell a whole story. While the Saigon execution became a powerful symbol of anti-war sentiment, the photo did not fully explain the circumstances on the streets of Saigon that day on 1 February 1968, two days after the launch of the Tet Offensive and why General Lone came to pull that trigger. Eddie Adams was born in New Kensington, Pennsylvania, in 1933, his love for photography began as a teenager while working for his school newspaper. After graduating he joined the United States Marine Corps and while there became a photographer photographing the Korean War. After his discharge he worked for several newspapers and wire services before joining the Associated Press in 1962. It was this wire agency where he worked while covering Vietnam. The photograph was taken two days into the Tet Offensive, a military campaign launched by the North Vietnamese Army and the Viet Cong on January 30, 1968. The offensive comprised of a series of guerrilla-style attacks in the southern cities of Saigon, Hue, and Da Nang, throwing them into chaos. It was amongst these scenes Eddie Adams found himself when the South Vietnamese military caught a suspected Viet Cong squad leader, Nguyen Van Lem, at the site of a mass grave of more than 30 victims. They frog-marched him through the streets. When the police chief General Lone raised his gun to the suspect's head, Adams thinking he was only going to be threatened, raised his camera accordingly. Instinctively he pressed his shutter at the exact moment General Lone pressed his trigger. The bullet passed through Lem's head as the photograph was snapped, before he then fell down to the ground dead. Not knowing he had actually captured the precise moment of death, Adams dropped off his film at the offices, and went to lunch not thinking too much more about the event. Only once it was developed did he realize the significance of the image. The Tet Offensive, as well as the images which accompanied it, were a shocking sight to Americans and in a way marked a turning point in the war. Americans, who had been assured by their President Lyndon Johnson, that the enemy were on their last legs, were instead shown a conflict where the North Vietnamese Army and Viet Cong were still strong, determined, and capable of launching large-scale attacks. Furthermore it showed that the U.S. military strategy was not working. The Saigon execution was taken with Eddie Adams' Leica at 1 500th of a second. The original photograph was actually taken on color film, though we are now more used to seeing the picture in black and white. Unlike many other famous photographs, the merit of this image almost entirely lies in what it captures and not on its composition, technical factors, or anything else. It is, in short, a news photograph. The ultimate realization of what Cartier-Bresson dubbed the decisive moment. While there has been some dispute as to where the bullet is at the time of the photograph, Eddie Adams always maintained that it was still traveling through the prisoner's head as the photograph was taken. You can see the contortion of his face from the force of the bullet, while to the left of the frame, a soldier looking on also winces at the graphic nature of the scene. As a viewer it's hard not to feel the same shock and perhaps also guilt, of witnessing something so horrific and personal. It is perhaps this, more than anything, which sears the photograph into the viewer's mind. Adam's photo editor at the AP, Hal Buell, said of the photograph, in one frame, it symbolizes the full war's brutality. Like all icons, it summarizes what has gone before, captures a current moment and if we are smart enough, tells us something about the future brutality all wars promise. As another put it, Eddie's picture was the real underbelly of violence and summary execution. It's what war is really like. Images such as the Saigon execution made many also question not only whether Vietnam was a war they could win, but whether it was one they should win.
In the months after the Tet Offensive public opinion shifted faster than at any other point during the war. From the moment Eddie Adams' film was developed, AP realized not only how powerful the image they had in their possession was, but also how divisive it would be. Those on the anti-war side of the political spectrum would want to use it as propaganda, while those in the establishment and pro-war would want it censured. Despite this, as well as the graphic content it represented, the image was released on the wires and was immediately published on front pages all across the world. The next year, in 1969, the image earned Eddie Adams the Pulitzer Prize for spot news photography. It would go on to become one of the most iconic images of the Vietnam War and is widely credited for being a major influence on turning public opinion against the conflict. It would also go on to be named one of Times Magazine's 100 Most Influential Photographs Ever. While Eddie Adams' famous photograph helped him go on to have a very successful career, photographing high-profile figures such as Ronald Reagan, Fidel Castro, and Malcolm X, and earned him more than 500 photojournalism awards in the process, his photograph of the Saigon execution was never one he was particularly proud of and the Pulitzer he won for it was something he grew increasingly bitter about. First of all he didn't think it was all that great of a photo, but even more than that he thought it was taken out of context. Pictures don't tell the whole story. It doesn't tell you why. The slain Viet Cong prisoner was captured after he reportedly killed a South Vietnamese officer, his wife, and six children. Eddie Adams didn't necessarily condone General Lone's behavior that day, but he did feel that he was unfairly vilified, and that the story and motives behind him killing the soldier were much more nuanced than the photograph portrayed. He said of the photograph, two people died in that photograph. The general killed the Viet Cong, I killed the general with my camera. By this point General Lone was living in America, after he lost a leg in combat and was brought to the U.S. to be treated for the injury at Washington's old Walter Reed Hospital. In 1978, still infamous because of the photograph, the government moved to deport him. They approached Adams to testify against Lone, but he instead testified in his favor. He was eventually allowed to stay and opened up his own restaurant in a Washington, D.C. suburb where he lived out the next 20 years until he died of cancer in 1998. In Eddie Adams' defense of the general he said, I didn't say what he did was right, but he was fighting a war, and he was up against some pretty bad people. Still photographs are the most powerful weapon in the world. People believe them, but photographs do lie, even without manipulation. They are only half-truths. What the photograph didn't say was, what would you do if you were the general at that time and place on that hot day, and you caught the so-called bad guy after he blew away, one, two, or three American soldiers? As for Eddie Adams, he died in 2004 of Lou Gehrig's disease when he was 71. More than anything he wanted to be remembered by his photographs of people fleeing post-war Vietnam, rather than of the photograph he took of the execution. It was these images that helped persuade the U.S. government to admit over 200,000 refugees into the U.S. and one of which also made it into Time's 100 Most Influential Images. Upon his death Eddie asked to be buried in his Marine Corps dress blues uniform, with a 35mm camera, wide-angle lens, and slow-speed color film. Because as he put it, where I go there's going to be a lot of light. And it won't be from up above, either. Fire, you can photograph really well with a slow-speed film. 